Hello, I'm Alex. Welcome back to Cube Puzzle Fun, a uh, YouTube channel where we talk about how do you solve these things, and we talk about it in plain English so that it is easy as possible for as many people as possible to understand what we're doing and how we're doing it. We just did step three where we got uh, these four corners so that we had a whole middle layer, and that's all looking good. And uh, the only thing we have left to do is solve the uh, top of the cube, and we are going to do that in two steps, step four and step five. Um, and step four is just getting these four uh, blue edges placed so that the blue is pointing upwards and uh, the other color is facing out over its correct center. Uh, when we uh, did step three and we got uh, the four edges placed along the middle row, we kicked all four of those uh, edges that had blue on them out up to the top there. And so they're up here somewhere, and uh, they we just got to get them so that the blue is facing up and that they're over their correct center. There are only two tools that we need to use to uh, get this whole step solved, and there are a very limited number of situations that we can encounter. Uh, we've kicked all four of these blue edges up to the top, and we could have all four of them with the blue not facing up to the top where all four blue edges would be facing outward. Uh, you know, if you have that situation, uh, all you need to do is use this first tool and you will get to where we are, where we have two uh, blue edges facing upwards and uh, they are in a straight line going across. Uh, the only situations you can have is all four of them with the blue facing out so that there are none of these four blue edges facing upwards. Uh, you can have two blue edges facing upwards uh, and they are in a straight line across from each other or you can have two blue edges facing upwards and they are at a right angle to each other or you could have all four blue edges uh, facing upwards. If you have all four blue edges facing upwards already, uh, just hang out for a bit because you are way ahead of us. Uh, but if you are like me and you have uh, two blue edges facing upward, um, we're going to figure out what we do to get the rest of them facing upwards. And if you have none, uh, you're going to need to do this uh, an extra time, but it's still the same process. So here is the first of those two tools that you will need for uh, solving step four. And uh, the reason why you're starting to need these tools, which are a series of moves that you have to do, you have to like remember a sequence of things that you have to do in the right order that you have to do them. And the reason that is, is because as more and more of the cube becomes solved, there are fewer and fewer ways that you can... Uh, manipulate the cube without undoing what you've done before. So we need a sequence of moves that will manipulate this stuff without uh, messing up all of this stuff. So let me show you one that will be very, very useful in getting more of these uh, blue edges to be facing upwards. Here is the sequence and how you do it exactly. We're going to do uh, a clockwise front, a clockwise on the top, and a clockwise on the right side. And then we're going to back all of those out. But when we back them all out, we're going to change the order a slight little bit. Because if we didn't change the order a slight little bit, then we wouldn't actually accomplish anything. If you did like a, you know, clockwise front a clockwise top and a clockwise side and then you undid the clockwise side and undid the clockwise top and undid the clockwise front uh you'd be right back where you started so we're going to change the order when we're backing them out a tiny bit and that little change is going to change uh a lot okay so here we go we're gonna do a clockwise front a clockwise top and a clockwise turn on the right side. Now when we're backing it out, we're going to go top first. Then we're going to do side and now we're going to do front. 
So front was the first to go, and front is the last to come out. But then we did front, top, side, and when we're backing it out, we do top, side, front. Okay? And what happened when we did all that? Well, not much. We still have two blue edges on the top and two that are not uh, facing upwards. The blue side is not facing upwards on top. But uh, even though it doesn't look like much has changed, this has actually gotten us one step closer because now we have the blue at the right angle. When we have the right angle, now we are very close to having all four blues on top. We just need to do that one more time. And if you started off with a zero um, blues facing up and did that uh, front top side thing, you will find that that got you to having the line across. So that was that was good. And then you needed to do it one more time, and that will get you to where we are with the right angle. And now, if we do it one more time, trust me on this, if we do it one more time, well, let's see what's going to happen if we do it one more time. One more time, but, but, don't just take off willy-nilly uh, without listening to the instructions, okay? But, it is very vital, very vital, that we hold it with the right angle exactly uh, how I'm holding it right now. If we were holding it this way, we would get different results. If we were holding it this way, we would get some terrible results. Uh, and so we need to hold it so that uh, one of the we're ha we have the blue right angle, and uh, one side is off the back to us, and one side is over to the left of us. Okay, we need the right angle to be forming kind of like a backwards L kind of a thing, and uh, yeah, we need to hold it exactly this way. So. Uh, here we go. We're going to see what's going to happen when we do our front clockwise, our top clockwise, our right side clockwise, and when we back it out, we're going to go in a different order and do our top first and not our right side first. Now we're going to do our right side, and oop, there comes a blue edge. There we go. And now when we back out our front and do our counterclockwise of the front bloop there comes the other blue edge and now we have all four blue edges facing upwards so if you started off with zero blue edges facing upwards uh, you needed to do that once to get to the line you need to hold the line so that it's this way when you do it again a second time when you do it a second time you will get a right angle you need to hold that right angle exactly uh, as I had shown you with the backwards facing L there and then do it one more time and you and then we got to where we are now where we have all four uh, blue edges facing up so that is good but that is not quite a solved step four because we will need to have all of the other color on the other side of the edge uh, over its correct center. Wouldn't it be great if uh, they were all already over their correct center? Yellow's already over its correct center, but um, the rest of them aren't. So let's uh, shift them around and see if we can get uh, more than just one. Uh, let's shift once. Now we got red and white yes there we go we got we managed to get two of them in the correct place and two of them are just reversed with the yellow over the orange and the orange over the yellow and that's usually what you're going to find is that you can swing this around this top row around uh and keep checking and keep checking and usually you will find that at least two if not all four can be placed over their correct centers somehow and then there will be two that are reversed. Um, and there are only two ways where that can occur. One of them will be if uh, the two that are over their correct center are on opposite sides. So like you would have a red over its correct center and an orange over its correct center, in which case uh, you have an extra step that you have to do. Uh, sorry, in that case. Or um, you can have, like we have, where the uh, the correct ones form an L and the incorrect ones uh, form another L. They're just sort of crossed up here where uh, yellow needs to come over to orange and orange needs to go over to yellow. 
So that brings us to our second tool uh, that we need to use in order to uh, fix this and complete step four. We are almost there. Uh, step four, we just need this one more tool, and this tool is for exactly this purpose, uh, this uh, conundrum that we find ourselves in, this situation that we have where we just need to flip, uh, we need to swap two, uh, two edges that are just uh, crossed up. And they, this one needs to be here and this one needs to be here. Again, when you're in step four and you're in all this tricky territory and there's so much solved cube that you do not want to disrupt and end up with, you know, messing it all up and sending yourself way back to the beginning, uh, it is very important then that you hold the cube uh, in the right orientation. In this case, we want to swap this yellow with this orange so we need to hold it exactly this way with this uh, L of what we want to swap uh, pointing towards us and towards the right, okay? The piece that we want to swap and the piece that we want to swap need to be towards us, one towards us, and one towards the right. We don't want to be holding it this way with one towards the back or this way with one towards the left. We want to be holding it exactly this way. And then we want to do something that I call uh, the scenic route. There is a uh, right side scenic route and there is a left side scenic route. And uh, this is what the scenic route is. Uh, it's, it seems complicated at first, but you really do get used to it. Um, so here's what it entails, okay? You want to pick up your green uh, right side elevator. Okay, and here is our passenger, uh, our green corner that is going to come off. Okay, she needs to come off the elevator and go to a protected place, right? So we wouldn't want to put her uh, back here because she would still be on the elevator. We would want to put her uh, over here, right? Okay, but uh, this is not just a regular elevator trick. This is the scenic route. She is uh, leaving the elevator, okay? But she's not just leaving it a little bit. She's leaving the elevator a lot. She's going all the way to the whole other corner of the office building here, okay? She is going all the way over here. Um, some people call this a left 180 and a right 180, and that is because this is a 180-degree turn. You are doing two turns. One, two. You are getting this green passenger as far away from the elevator as she can possibly get. She is going all the way over there, okay? And then she is going to take the scenic route to come back to the elevator. Now, this is going to seem a little weird, but it's what we need to do. The elevator goes back down without her. Okay, she comes halfway back. Now she is... Uh, you know, near the elevator. Um, the elevator is going up and down without her. Um, now the elevator comes back up. Now she's ready to get back on the elevator. And the elevator goes down. And now all of our pieces can be placed over their correct centers. They're not over their correct centers yet. We need one more little turn. But uh, they are all... Uh, ready to be placed over their correct centers and you can just swing this around until you figure out uh, how that is there we go uh, orange is over orange yellow is over yellow red is over red and white is over white and that was accomplished with the scenic route I have to cut it off right there so that we can still make it in under 15 minutes but if you are having problems with step four uh, I have a video on some of the common problems that you can run into on step four. Otherwise, hope to see you in step five where we can complete the whole thing. Peace.